concerning the faith that in the last days that many will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The word doctrine means teachings of devils. These demonic spirits and the demonic influence that moves over people, they can talk. And they are not ignorant. They also desire to teach. The Bible says that there are false ministers of Satan who disguise themselves as the apostles of the Lord. And then the scripture says, don't be surprised by that. Because even the devil himself would transform himself into an angel of light. And so we see then that whatever God does, Satan tries to contaminate and to imitate. Christ said that the spirit of truth will come and guide you into all truth. And so here comes the devil with lying spirits who claim to be the spirit of truth. I feel the virtue. I feel the virtue. Somebody understood what I just said. So this is why it is written, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see if it is of God. Why is that? Because many false prophets have come into the world. You have false prophets because you have false spirits. You have false prophets because you have people who have been taught and taught well, but by demonic spirits. And so you need to learn to recognize what's of God and what is not. Try the Spirit. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger they will not entertain, but they will run from. And yet, when you look at the religious world today, so-called Christianity or those who believe in Christ, many people are crying out, we are in a revival. Well, the first thing you do uh, the first symptom of recognizing truth is anything that goes contrary to the word, you know it's not God. Now, in the book of Proverbs, whenever you are asking a question or someone is trying to uh, show you something, always remember this. Turn to Proverbs. And I believe it's chapter 30. And when I de debate or discuss scripture, I always use this as a foundation. May God bless the reading of his word. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. If you have it, read it with me. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. 
Anytime you have to add to God's word to support your teaching, that's a red flag. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those that trust him. Add not to his word. Jesus, when being tempted of the devil, Satan came up against him. You turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. Satan came up against him. And Jesus gave us an example of how to fight the devil, who is spirit. When Satan came against the Christ, Jesus said, it is written. And he quoted scripture. And he stood on scripture. And each time the temptation came, Jesus said, it is written. Now the Lord just revealed something to me concerning that. Satan can only come at you in three ways. Lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. In those three categories, you cover all manner of temptation. And what it really is, is these are the attributes of Satan himself. The Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and it names the attributes of that fruit. The love, gentleness, peace, joy, long-suffering, patience. This is how you recognize the Holy Ghost. When you feel these attributes, you know that it's God. Well then, what attributes does the spirit of Satan have? Lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. This is all that is in the world. These things are not of God, and they shall pass away. Why are they not of God? Because this is the way of Satan. This is why the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? Because all you're going to get out of the world is Satan. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The devil only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. How does he do that? Through the lust of the eyes, through the pride of life, and through the lust of the flesh. Amen? Why do you, how do you know this? You go back to the beginning. When the devil came and tempted Eve, he tempted Eve with himself. He gave Eve of his own seed, of, of his own presence and his own spirit. How did he tempt Eve? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. She saw that the fruit was, was, was good to eat. Lust of the flesh, lust, the lust of the eyes. She saw that it was pleasant, lust of the eyes. She saw that it was good to eat, lust of the flesh. She saw that it would make one wise, pride of life. And this is why Jesus came in the wilderness to undo what Satan did in the garden. The devil came to him with the exact same temptation. So now you know, once you learn devil's devices, he, don't, he has nothing new. He came to Jesus in the same way. Lust of the flesh, as he did to Eve. She saw that it was good to eat lust of the flesh. She said to Jesus, if you be the son of God, you're hungry. Turn these stones into bread. Lust of the flesh, the same with Eve. It's good food. Jesus said it is written. Then he said to Jesus, he took him up on top of the temple and said, the Bible says that the angel of God will protect you. You be the son of God. Then why don't you jump? The angel of God will protect you. You can't get hurt. It meant the pride of life. He saw that it would make her wise. Pride of life. Now he's coming to Jesus with the pride of life. Then he took him and showed him all the glory of the world and said, listen, all of this is mine. I give it to whoever I will if you bow down and worship me. Look at all the glory, lust of the eyes. And he saw that it was pleasant. She saw lust of the eyes. Tempted the same temptation. But Jesus defeated him with scripture. Now what was the revelation that God gave me? In the scriptures, is an answer to any temptation you could ever go through or be faced with. The scriptures can uphold you through any and every temptation. The word of God is equipped to fight the devil on every level. This is why the Holy Ghost is upon me. I feel the virtue. Somebody's understanding what I'm saying. This is why we have to learn to know what is God's word and to stand on it. It is written. And the devil can talk all he wants, but if 
you stand your ground, he has to respect the word of God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he what? Know that the devil can run and he can run fast. I feel a virtue. I feel, I feel a strong virtue. May God help me say something that somebody needs to hear because I keep feeling an open virtue. You don't have to claim defeat with the devil who's already been defeated. You don't have to go around all confused, God, what am I going to do? How can I stand? The answer is in the word of God. You stand on God's word. And the Bible says to back that up, there is no temptation that is uh, uncommon to man. But, if, and listen, but with every temptation, God will give you a way to escape. And he will not allow you to suffer more than you can bear. That is bearing witness to the fact that the scripture will give you strength for every situation. Everything you're going through is not uncommon. Somebody somewhere has been through it, has done it, has come through. It's the temptation that only men befall. And God is faithful. God is faithful. He will always give you a way out, but it's up to you to take it when he gives it. They say this is the time of revival, but it is not. This is the time of falling away. Before the Lord comes back, there will be a falling away from the truth. The apostles wrote about it. Paul said that when I leave, grievous wolves are going to come in and they're not going to spread a flock. He said again, many shall depart from the faith in the last days. He said, the Holy Ghost is saying this. What are you saying, Holy Ghost? He's speaking of expressively that many shall depart from the faith. What's the faith of the apostles' doctrine? The teachings of Christ and the disciples. Giving heed. They're not just going to walk out, but they're going to start listening to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, son, the Holy Ghost has just revealed something else to me. No, we, have, we teach this a lot. You hear it everywhere. But something just stood out. One of the devil's biggest grounds, listen carefully, one of Satan's biggest grounds of recruiting will be in the churches. Are oh, y'all hearing me? One of his biggest grounds to get recruits will be in the church. The Holy Ghost said so. The Holy Ghost said that many shall not depart from the world, but many shall depart from the faith. I feel a virtue. That Holy Ghost wants to come up into real churches. That Holy Ghost wants to come up and, and when people are really seeking God, and he wants to imitate the Spirit of God, catch those who are not sober, catch those who are sleeping, with seducing spirits and doctors of devils. And the Holy Ghost just showed me something else. We fight against each other, but take Satan's kingdom is not divided. Son, the Holy Ghost just showed me was that the seducing spirit and the teaching spirit work together. Seducing, trying to lure you, trying to trying to blind you, trying to sway you. Amen. Have an itchy ear that the seducing spirits come to try to break you down, get you to yield to temptation. And when you drop your guard, then those teaching demons come in. Once the seducing spirits have seduced you to drop your guard. This is what Satan was doing to Eve in the spirit, seducing her. Surely God's word doesn't mean what it said. Oh, now you know that's a seducing spirit. Surely doesn't take all that to live for God. That's a seducing spirit. But if we got to add to the word, no. Somebody comes and tells you God's word says this to make a long story short, tell them, show me. You want to see what it says about it in the Old Testament and you want to see what it says about the subject in the New Testament. Show me. Because Jesus said it is what? It is written. And if it's not written, you don't buy it. And so many people are teaching, some in ignorance, some maliciously, doctrines of devils. If, listen. So many people that hold the apostle doctrine think it's all right as long as you preach one God baptized in Jesus' name and Holy Ghost. But the rest of your doctrine is wrong. I'm here to tell you that's not so. You got to eat the whole roll. You got to teach it right. 
and the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, especially you preach it, any time you say, thus said the Lord, you better be right. Because God says he hates it when people speak in his name and he has not spoken. Amen. If somebody says, you know, Jesus is Michael the Archangel, as the seven day of business and joking witnesses proclaim, you don't argue, just tell them, show me. Where is that written? If someone says, the Lord is coming back, these are doctors of devils, and the pre-rapture teaching, God is going to come and snatch the church out before the great tribulation, and we're going to go back to heaven for seven years. Show me where it's written. He's coming back before tribulation. Well, you don't say it like that, but show me how it says it. Well, God is a holy trinity. We worship the holy trinity. That's all good to find. Now, show me where it calls him a holy trinity. Well, it doesn't say it, but it implies it. Then that means it's not written. Well, God is coming back for the fivefold ministry. Show me where the Bible even has the word fivefold in there. Well, it's not in there, but it implies it. But show me where it is written. How is it going to be a ministry that's not even written in the word and not even in the scriptures? How is it that everything else you say you can give scripture for, but in certain important issues you have to add it? Doctrine of devils. Doctrine of devils. One scholar said concerning the Godhead, the Holy Trinity, he said, well, the, the church fathers were forced. The scriptures forced us to create the word Trinity. How come it forced you to create the word Trinity, but it didn't force Paul? It didn't force Peter? It didn't force John. It didn't force Matthew. It didn't force Apollo. But the men after the apostle, it forced you? How about just preaching it the way they wrote it? I feel the virtue. Church, they pray the Lord. How about just telling it the way it is? If you're going to add to the word. You see, the purpose of biblical interpretation is not to correct God's word. Not to put it in your own way, but to get an understanding of that which is written. Because that which is written is already established. Now, you've got people that teach about Christ. Christ was 100% man, 100% God, and everybody shouting. Let's interrupt that for a minute. Show me where that's written. Now, it sounds good. But where is it written? Because the devil ain't gonna respect it if it ain't written. Show me where it's written. If they can't, you can stop a lot of debates. What do you want? One day a young man came to me and said, Bishop, I want to debate with you with the Bible. I said, What do you want to debate about? I want to debate with you about women preachers. I said, No need, son. Not with the Bible. Oh yeah, Bishop, yeah, I said it's impossible. Why is that? Because that's not written. So what you're going to end up doing is we're just arguing over opinion. Because it's not written. So how are you going to use the Bible to defend something that's not what? In there. Don't you understand? I feel the virtue. You don't have to be a scholar to understand the word of God. Because it wasn't written by our scholars. It's amazing how these theologians and these scholars are really having hard, thing, hard time understanding Peter. But when the people of Peter's day and John's day said that they were unlearned and common men. Maybe the Jews were smarter than our scholars today. Because they looked at Peter and John and said, these men are ignorant. They're everyday people. But our scholars today can't seem to get the simple understanding of what they wrote. Now, for instance, Look at uh, Revelations chapter 2. Now, what's the doctrine of devil? Anything that goes contrary to God's word, no matter how pleasant it may seem. And sometimes we are teaching by demonic influence and don't know it. For example, Jesus told the disciples, I have to die. I have to give my life. And Peter turned around and said, Lord, you're not going to die. Now, which one of us would have got upset with Peter for saying that? He loved Jesus. He said, you're not going to die. But Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, Satan. Peter stepped back. He probably was looking for the devil. 
And he said, you desire savers the things that be of men and not of God. First of all, any doctrine that feeds the flesh is not of God. Amen. The devil feeds the flesh. But the Holy Ghost is the mother. I keep feeling the virtue. God bless you. Somebody's hearing me because I can feel it. The reason why Jesus said, listen carefully. Now we all know that Peter was not trying to uh, be, be malicious. He was speaking out of concern. Lord, who can take you down? Can't nobody beat you. You're not going to die. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, because the very words that Peter spoke, Peter spoke, though it was out of concern, was contrary to the scriptures. Do you hear me? Whenever you speak something that goes against the word, you are demonically influenced. Peter didn't realize what he was saying. If Jesus didn't die, we couldn't live. If Jesus didn't die, our sins couldn't be forgiven. If Jesus didn't die, then the kingdom of darkness could not be overpowered. Why did Christ come? He came to give his life. Now here's Peter saying, you're not going to die. You're not going to do God's will. You can't do that. What spirit would try to keep you from doing the right thing, no matter how nice it comes? So, in your planning, in your jesting, in your laughing, in your concern, I was that time to be concerned. Yeah, but the spirit and the things you said, though you didn't mean any harm, were demonically inspired because it went against everything God stood for and stands for. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, it is written, honor thy father and thy mother. He said, but you say that it's a gift that whatever your parents can do for you, you deserve it. <laughs> Doctrine of devils. Is when the Bible says one thing, and what? Finish that. Finish that. According to the example I just gave. Doctrine of devils. When the Bible says one thing, but you say something else. Doctrine of devils. Who's inspiring you to go against the scriptures? Doctrine of devils when a spirit tries to, the Holy Ghost is upon me, the spirit of the Most High. When a spirit, my God, this is happening right now. A doctrine of devils when the spirit tries to get you to doubt the teachings of God. That's a doctrine of devils. The Holy Ghost doesn't get you to look at the word of God with a critical eye. A seeking eye, seeking understanding, yes. But when you come and your mind is set on finding fault, that's not the Holy Ghost. Have you not heard that the devil is the accuser of the brethren? Why do you say that? Listen to how Eve came. The devil came to Eve. She quoted the word just as it is written. The devil said, first of all, will you not eat of this tree? Satan will come and try to get a doctrine or a teaching that helps hold you up. And he'll come and get you to question what you've been taught in righteousness. Give you a second thought. And she quoted the scripture. We have been told to eat of every tree but this. Now, anybody that's trying to be sincere would stand on the word and say, okay, that's what the word said. Not a doctrine of devil, not a demon trying to teach you. Then Satan came back and said, surely you won't die. Listen to this teaching. Surely it doesn't mean what you're reading. You wouldn't use that concept now. Surely it doesn't mean that. Because God knows that the day you eat, you shall be like the gods. Somebody say, what are you saying, Bishop? What are you saying? I'm glad you asked. What the devil was telling her is that the reason why God doesn't want you to eat this is because he's trying to keep you back. Church is keeping you down. The holiness of God is trying to make you miss it. You see, if you do it God's way, you're going to miss out. God's trying to keep you back. There's, there's knowledge he don't want you to have. And you got all these people talking about, hey, have you read the Gospel of Mary? You know, Adam had another wife. You know, there are more books in the Bible that they don't want us to know. Same demon 2,000, 4,000 years ago. Same devil. You know, God's trying to keep you back. God's trying to hide knowledge from you. Oh, they don't want you to know this. No, God. 